Roblox is available on pretty much anything you can think of, and so is the strongest battlegrounds. PlayStation 5? Yup. Xbox One? Sick man. VR? Hell yeah. The Amazon Fire HD 8? Why not? The Nintendo 3DS? Eh. The 3DS is pretty awesome. I basically grew up with it. I played Pokemon with my friends, got inspired by Dan TDM to complete Tomodachi Life, and then I smashed the screen. Truly an excellent experience that a lot of 3DS owners can relate to. A dream of mine was to be able to play Roblox on the 3DS. I thought this would be possible since a lot of the games you could play on it looked better than Roblox did. Well, at least that's what my kid brain thought. And it's not like I had an actual good understanding of the tech back then either. In this day and age, the 3DS is severely underpowered. It was released 13 years ago, and its 2015 revision is faster, but it still can't hold a candle to the hand of 2024. And that's fine, because the 3DS has a really good library of games that all run well. Unfortunately, Roblox isn't a part of that library. But what if I could change that? The strongest battlegrounds on the 3DS would be the weirdest, coolest, and dumbest thing ever. But is it even possible to get it to run? Let's see. The 3DS has its own shop app called the eShop, which has been shut down for over a year at this point. Nintendo even recently shut down the 3DS's online servers for multiplayer games, but the eShop is still accessible to re-download old stuff you bought. If you search Roblox in the eShop, you get nothing. So how can I possibly get Roblox to run on this thing? Two words. Custom firmware. The 3DS has been hackable for over a decade at this point. You can mod a 3DS in 15 minutes if you have a PC, an SD card reader, and an IQ over 60. People mod their 3DS to bring out its full potential. A good example being that it's one of the best options for the emulation of older games. But the downside is that lots of people use it for stuff that Nintendo thinks is super bad. Nintendo, I'm just gonna say this, don't poop your pants please. There's no piracy in this video, and everything I say and do is perfectly legal. This is not a tutorial on how to pirate games. In fact, there isn't going to be any tutorial at all. If you somehow find this video, rest assured your 13-year-old system's profits are safe and sound. I think it's obvious at this point that running Roblox natively on the 3DS's hardware is impossible. There's no app, and there's no way the system can handle it even if there was one. The best option is to stream my PC to my 3DS and control Roblox using the 3DS's controls. First, I need to pick the system I'll be using for this. I have two options here. I have this regular 2DS, which has definitely seen better days. And yes, this is a 3DS. It's just lacking the 3D feature to save money. And then I have this new 3DS XL, which I have clearly tampered with. And no, it's not actually new, that's just Nintendo's garbage naming scheme in action. I got this thing used for 80 Canadian dollars a few years ago, and the game card slot doesn't even work. To be completely honest, I don't want to use either of these. The 2DS is too weird, and my 3DS XL has a bunch of dead pixels in the top screen, and it's just ugly. I'm gonna use this one I just got in the mail. This is the regular new 3DS. And yes, it's Japanese. Why did I buy a Japanese 3DS? Japanese people have a reputation for taking much better care of their things, unlike North Americans. A used Japanese 3DS in acceptable condition is like a brand new North American 3DS straight from the box. When I bought this thing, for some reason I immediately got the idea to try to play the strongest battlegrounds on it. I don't know if that's my content brain kicking in or if I was just genuinely interested, but now I'm at the point where I'm 100% invested into this. This thing has zero scratches on the screen, which is great. You can't buy these systems brand new without paying $500 for one, so this is actually really awesome. When I bought this, they made sure to say that the female employees handled it with care. How nice. Also, the lighting is gonna get real bad later on, and that's my bad because I don't ever do this kind of content, so I'm never prepared for it whenever I need to do it. After struggling through the Japanese settings, I finally set up the system only to find out after that it doesn't have an SD card in it. That's fine, because I was planning to put this one in it anyways. It's so crazy how 256 entire gigabytes of storage can fit in this tiny little chip the size of your fingertip. When I rebooted, it gave me an error message every time I inserted it, so I went to reformat it to make it work properly. 
It didn't work through the conventional Windows method, so I had to download a tool called Rufus that I discovered through this very helpful Reddit thread. Now that the micro SD card works, I could begin the process of installing custom firmware. And again, I won't say exactly how to do this, but it involves some file moving between your PC and your micro SD card. There's multiple different hacks that can change depending on what system version your 3DS is running. In my case, this 3DS is running the version 11.6.0.39J, so I went with the sloth hack that involves changing some proxy settings and pressing a big button that really does make you rethink what you're doing. After that's done, you get into a bunch of menus that don't look very safe, but in reality, they're just backing up your stuff just in case something goes wrong and your 3DS gets bricked. Bricked is when something goes wrong during the process and your 3DS becomes an unusable paperweight. Luckily, the chances of this happening are near 0%, so we're all good. At this point, custom firmware is fully installed and now I can download pretty much any app I could ever want. I specifically said I could stream my PC to my 3DS and control it from there, so let's get the best app for it. It's called Pinbox. There's a few other installs you have to do to make everything work properly, so I got all of those done. The way it works is actually really simple. All you have to do is open the pinbox server you get in the download files and type in your IP as well as a port number. If you don't know what any of that means, that's fine. Just keep watching. After that, just tap start and it's going to connect. It's actually there. I did it. Roblox, let alone the strongest battlegrounds, is the last thing I expected to ever see on a 3DS. I will admit, it's pretty blurry because of the 3DS's low resolution screen, but that doesn't even come close to the bigger problems here. Firstly, my 3DS's C stick must have major stick drift or something. I'm using the left circle pad to move, and the right C stick to move the camera. The C stick would be cool if it was an actual joystick and not just a pressure sensitive piece of rubber. Secondly, the delay is absolutely insane. Just look at where I am on my monitor, and then look at the 3DS. I'm at the very least three seconds delayed here or something. And the weird part is that it didn't even start off that way. It was actually pretty good before I kept going. My 3DS pretty much became a glorified controller. I tried to figure stuff out, but it was not going well at all. I did figure out how to do a combo with one move. Excellent. I was gonna try to hit a black flash or two, but because of this stick drift, I could never dream of doing that. Let's see if I can somehow win a ranked match. I think it's safe to say I had no chance in the world. 